Okay, everybody. We have our December Minion Talk. Is that what we're call calling it? Yeah, the Minion Enterprise Talk. Okay. And uh, this time we're going to talk about um, a, l a little bit about user management and a lot about user cloning and scripting. And we've got some fabulous things to show you guys today. As usual, you guys are welcome to ask questions live. Uh, I'll, I'll just say that if you're not talking, mute yourself so I don't have to do it. <laughs> but you're welcome to unmute yourself to ask questions if you like, and you don't necessarily have to wait till the end either. So uh, Jen's going to take this uh, first part, right? And uh, I'm going to interject little little tasties every now and then if I feel the need. <laughs> but other than that, I'm going to shut up and rest my voice because I talked for like five hours last night. So that was that was a lot of talking. Well, uh, we're going to do a brief introduction, but. Um, I want to spend as much time as possible today on the demos. So first things first, hi, we're Minionware. We make solutions for SQL Server. So far we have published Minion Reindex and Minion Backup. Minion CheckDB is in the works right now. These three are our free uh, Minion modules. You can go to Minionware.net right this moment, go download them, play with them. Well, you know the two that are published, of course. Uh, download them, play with them, and, and become super impressed at how feature-rich and complete they are. I was talking with somebody online that were using a, a third-party backup, and everybody was telling them, no, no, use native backups. And I said, yeah, that's kind of exactly why we wrote Minion Backup, because native all the way, and also scheduling and logging and tons of configuration and options and so on and so on and so on. What? Uh, nothing I can say during the thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, Minion Enterprise is what we're talking about today. This is our big <laughs> flagship product that we're extremely proud of. Minion Enterprise is our SQL Server management solution, and we've, we've talked a good deal about um, the overall architecture and the different modules in other webinars you can see on youtube.com slash midnight BBA. And uh, for now, I think we're, we'll just stick to it's our SQL Server management solution. Mm -hmm. and, and man, we haven't even, with all the webinars we've done, we haven't begun to cover all of the functionality. No, not even close. All right, let's go to the next slide. Let's try again. Oh. There we go. We'll run through our key philosophies. Uh, again, briefly, I want to get as much of the demo time as we can. Um, we have designed all of these products with some key things in mind, uh, and we do not break these. We always consider the entire enterprise. We don't like historically, you know, we've, we've been DBAs a long time, and historically, most solutions tend to be geared as if there's only one instance in your entire enterprise, as if you've only got one SQL Server instance. So anything that you do, you have to do on this instance, and then go over to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And that's just not a good way to work. All of these are key for the entire enterprise. So we've, we, we've, uh, created the term set-based enterprise. Yeah, I like that. Because that's what we're giving you, right? We're, we don't expect you to rebar across 2,000 servers, 5,000 servers, 600 servers, right? That's ridiculous. You should be able to get everything in a single place. Right. That's the whole point of that means. Um, automate everything. <laughs> automate everything that can be automated. Um, I don't know that we – yeah, we, 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 that's exactly what we mean. We want to automate everything possible. We don't drop objects on servers. This is kind of a big deal. Uh, a lot of products that you get, you have to install on every single instance. And then when there's an update, you have to do an update on every single instance. And you have to schedule downtime and plan rollbacks and contingency plans. Uh -uh. And, that's, and that's testing and change control forms and committee, change control meeting, committee meetings and assurances and all of that. It's just all kinds of big fun. We don't care for that. We very much like, and so we have put in place a central server. Minion Enterprise lives there. It's dedicated. Um, that gives the added benefit, by the way, of the DBAs actually having control over their own management solution as opposed to, I need to make a change. I'm going to have to put in a change request and then wait for three weeks while people pick at it or ignore it. So we don't drop objects on servers. Yeah. We don't event storm. Uh, event storming is the practice of getting hundreds or thousands of alerts that mean absolutely nothing. Or they may mean something. Or they may mean something. Yeah, that's the thing is you don't know. But generally speaking, you get so many that it's impossible to tell the difference. And people right. put in outward <clears throat> filters so that they're not just, 
you know, deluged with uh, an inbox full of the same thing over and over and over and over. Right. And over. The perfect example of this is we had a, a client who had a NAS go down one night, and they had over 12,000 backups fail um, because, you know, their backup NAS was gone. Of course. And they got a single email with 12,000 items in it from Minion instead of getting 12,000 emails that their, that their backups didn't go off, which is, how, which is how pretty much every vendor on the planet sends the emails. Right. Oh, this database, and then it's just, and next thing you know, you wake up and you got 12,000 emails, and you're going to, not only are you going to spend the first half of your morning deleting those, right, but now you've got other stuff that's going to get in, interspersed into there that you're going to miss. You're going to accidentally delete it. You're not going to see it. You're going to you're going to something, right? Yeah. Log everything. Report on anything. This one does stand on its own, but I'm going to say a little bit extra. Um, we gather Minion Enterprise gathers tons of information from all over the enterprise and logs it centrally. We provide views and stored procedures and various functions ways of functions, cases. various ways of breaking down this data and extrapolating from it. There is literally no way we could foresee every possible use case um, that, that clients, that users are, are going to have. So we log as much as possible so that you can report on anything you want. And we've made it as easy as possible, like, right? So like, for instance, when you have a, a, a collection of database properties, then we also give you a view that gives you the last collection of database properties so you don't have to do the date math in there, right? But as well, we also do a couple joins for you so that we also give you other information that goes along with that as well. So you don't have to do those joins yourself. Right. You query from the view. And so, so we've gone out of our way to make this as easy as possible, which is another thing that a lot of vendors don't do with their products. They, they try to hide their schema from you and make it as, as hard as possible to get at things. And we've gone out of our way. To make it as accessible as possible, which ties into the next slide, which is we want you to be able to work like a DBA. I mean, we're in a unique position because we are SQL Server DBAs building a product for SQL Server, and the clients are SQL Server DBAs, which means it's data. You know, we pull in data. We keep the data. We report on the data. You query the data. Uh, we don't put a GUI on top of it. Data, database administrators don't do GUIs well. It's not – well, well, don't do well. They, no, I should say – GUIs are not for database administrators, right? We, we, we know how to query. We know how to manipulate data. That's the whole point. So today, we're going to talk about a problem. SQL Service Security, difficult to manage. Um, man, this has been, I love talking to uh, managers and brass especially because I have to actually explain that security is a major pain point for DBAs, or have to explain it to DBAs. Everybody knows, well, I've got to create a new user on 50 boxes, or I've got to audit um, sysadmin access, or I've got to um, find out who's got privileges and, and if they're consistent across the boxes the way they should be. Uh, speaking of auditing, what about history? You know, do we have any kind of a history? Is it accessible? Is it a usable format? This is some of the things these are some of the things we're going to talk about today. Exactly. Oh, is that me, Demo? That's totally you. I'm Demo. You're a Demo. I'm Demo. You're a Keep. Hey, I'm Keep. Okay. Well, it just disappeared. <coughs> okay. So, you know, today we're going to talk about security. Now, some of this stuff you've seen before, um, but it bears repeating because it's the first half of our, our big security offering and we're going to talk about user cloning and scripting today as well, and that's going to finish off our security offering. So um, let's start with – let's start from the top down. I know some of you guys haven't seen this before, and some of you may have. So we're just going to start from the top down, and we're going to show you a couple of the things that we showed last time just to kind of warm up and give you a good idea of what our security offering is. And this stuff is built around – being able to investigate security and change security and manage security um, on a massive scale, right? This is considering the entire enterprise. This is your set-based enterprise in action right here, right? So <clears throat> let me come back up here. Let's, let's, this is one of my favorite demos. I love it because <clears throat> let's say that, 
Okay, let's let's just start off with um, the collector's uh, the the login's current. Hey, do me a view. favor when yes. you get a second and embiggen that. Embiggen. Oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. Embiggen yeah. the text. Two hundred. There we go. I am on the wrong server, guys. Sorry, I need to be on my <laughs> demo server. Okay, try that. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> By default, we get um, we get everything from syslogins as well as some extra info, right? So you can see we've got all of the good login stuff here, password hash, um, whether it's NT, you know, the login name. But we also get the stuff last bad password time, uh, the last password set time, uh, last date modified, whether it's locked, uh, whether they must change the password. So we get a, get a lot of this, um, a lot of this extra info is all that's, that's stored in other places, right? So, and, and if you'll look here on our instances, you'll see that this is for our entire operation, for our entire shop, I can see that I've got 128 users that are SA. And you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm changing server names here, right? So this is my entire organization in a, in a single result set. But let's single out a single box so you can, you can kind of see we're, we're going to identify a problem and we're going to show you how we solve it. So looking at this one box, I can see I've got 72 rows coming back from this one box. Now I've shortened the result set because I'm not interested in all that stuff, right? But I can see the login type. I can see that some of these are Windows groups and some of them are Windows users. Some of them are SQL logins, right? Look at these. Some of these guys are SA. So let's zero in on the SAs. In fact, let's zero in on the Windows groups that are SAs because that's what I'm really interested in for this demo. So for this demo, I can see that I've got these Windows groups and these guys are all SA. And these guys, I know what they are, right? These guys are, are services. This is the DBA group, but Budget SQL, I have no idea what Budget SQL is or why the hell it's an SA on my box. It doesn't look familiar to me. <clears throat> so can, Minion Enterprise will go out to AD and it'll grab all of your AD info, all of your AD user info. So let's take a look at just that one group. And this is for the current view, right? So here I've got this group, and I'm going to expand this. And you can see the object name is the user. So you can see that we, we pull in the users, and these are actual usernames. But look, some of these guys are groups themselves. And they could have 30 nested groups inside of there with 3,000 users each. Yep. You, just, you have no idea what you've got, right? However, I, I, will, I will take time out right now to say, at all of the AD info we get, the bad login count, the last, the last login, um, we get the last password set, um, the last bad password attempt. We get all of this stuff, email address, all of this stuff that you can use, and you can even give the, some of this stuff to your, your AD guys, right, and say, hey, look, we've got this thing that you could use a process on, right? We, all this, the distinguished name stuff here that you could parse through if you needed to. Uh, the SID, the GUID, all of this stuff. So we've got all of this good stuff in here. We grab everything out of AD that they allow us to. But the problem still remains that regardless, I've got these nested groups in here, and I have no idea how deep that rabbit hole goes, right? So with our AD expansion, <coughs> what we do is we unwind all of those groups, unnest all of those groups, right? And we give you a flat list of users. So this is a simple SP call. So here we've got AD accounts and SQL by server name. So I want to do this for a single server, and that's this MinionCon server that I'm interested in. Now, you can just call this SP. You don't have to do it in dynamic SQL like I'm doing. But this SP returns all of the users, all of the expanded users on the entire box, right? I'm interested in sysadmins. So I have to put this result set into a temp table up here so that I can then only gather the sysadmins. Because you may not want sysadmins. You may want somebody who's bulk admin, or you may want somebody who has access to this database, or somebody that's... Or a combination uh, of things. Yeah, with, really a, nice. with a create date greater than this, or whatever, right? I mean, I can't, I can't tell you what you're going to want to search for, right? So the simple way is to put it in a temp table 
And once I get that fully expanded list in a temp table, then I can, I can worry about my where clause any way I want to, right? So let's go ahead and run this. Now, remember, we had 128 people in the entire organization that had SA, right? That was that first result set. Right. I'll say 128 rows came back for that. Yeah. And so here I've got 163 people on the server alone that actually have SA. And you can see here we've expanded these groups. So I can see the, the, the users of that group now, of each one of those groups. So we will unwind every one of those groups and show you the flat list of users. So instead of that list of four groups that had SA, mm -hmm. now we've got this list of 163 users that are just coming from that one Windows group alone, right? So that's pretty powerful. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody that's failed to go, good God. Yeah. Right? And we've had a couple, a couple shops that have actually more or less been saved by this because they found out they had – hundreds of people in SA on one of their big important box that somebody had been, uh, somebody had accidentally put them into a group that they didn't realize and gave them SA on that box and they, they had no idea how long would they have been like that, right? Okay, so that was for a single box, but remember I keep talking about the holistic server, right? The set-based enterprise. So now we're going to run that same thing everything. So this is in full all. Notice how we're not passing it any, any server name, right? So this is going to be the exact same thing that we just did, only it's going to be for every server in the network. Now, <clears throat> this is going to take a few more seconds. So I'll just take a sip of my tea and clear my throat a little bit while I'm waiting. It takes a few seconds for this because, A, it's on a laptop, and, B, it's running through a lot of data. <clears throat> Probably about 30-something seconds, I guess. There we go. We're coming in on 30 seconds now. There we go. Okay, so 35 seconds on my laptop. That's not too bad. However, I pulled back 127 rows now of everybody that has SA. Unfortunately, this is only for the Windows groups, right? So if I want to get everybody else, I'm going to have to help them. And I'm going to do that in just a second. But first, I'm going to stick with that same temp table that I just created because notice how I queried, but I didn't, I didn't drop it. And now I can just see a count of people in SA by server. So if I were going to audit my servers, I would definitely start with MinionCon here because there's definitely something gone seriously wrong with this server, right? So uh, just a, a simple group by query will tell you, you know, will, will, will give you a good idea of where you stand on SA accounts on each server. And again, that was still only the, only the Windows groups. Now let's go ahead and add everybody else back in. And I'm going to put them into that exact same temp table because I've already got it, right? And I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna query from uh, uh, from collector .logins where it's a Windows user or a SQL user. So I'm just gonna add those guys back in, and that gave me 97 more rows. <clears throat> now I could query directly from here from the temp table where SA equals one, but you see the problem is is I've got this. Um, uh, AD object name, and then I've got a SQL name. So it's either going to be an AD object or a SQL or a SQL object, right? And their names are different columns. Right. So some of these are going to be null, and some of them are, are not going to be null. And that's just a really sloppy result, right? However, a quick coalesce with those two columns. Now get a full list. 324 people have access to have SA in my environment. And here's the servers, and here's how they're getting in. This guy's a direct Windows user. This guy's getting in from a Windows group. So is this guy. This guy's a SQL login. This guy's a Windows user. And you can see exactly what they're doing to get in, right? And you can see this is across my entire environment. So if you wanted to do a security audit of your entire shop, it would take just a few seconds to do this. And even if it took, I don't know, if you had 30,000 servers and it took 45 minutes for the query to run, it's not 45 minutes of your time, and it's still a lot faster than it would be if if uh, if you'd have done it otherwise, right? And if you and if you save that 
into a, a, a static table so you can come back tomorrow and work on a few more servers and come back the next day and work on a few more servers. You don't have to keep running that 45 minute query again and again, right? Sure. So, um, so there you go. That is, that's from the top down, how to investigate things from the top down and see everything that's in your environment. And, and this is just an example for SA, right? You can easily see, you know, who has, um, uh, who doesn't have the password policies enabled, uh, you can see who has uh, rights to multiple boxes. You can see all kinds of things, right? Just you're only limited by your ability to write the query. Now, piggybacking off of that, because I, I don't have a demo for this, but I do want to talk about it. <coughs> so piggybacking off of both of these, actually, I need to give this other demo before I, I talk about piggybacking off of them, don't I? So that was from the top down. Now let's go from the bottom up. And we get this question all the time, actually. We're getting it more and more, is I've got this user, and I need to figure out all of the servers that he has access to. And I need to know how he's getting in because we've tried to take him off of the SQL box, and he's still able to get in there. He's coming in through a Windows group even, and we, can't, and we took him out of that group, and we can't figure out how he's still getting in, right? So we, we, we had a user... Uh, a minion user just week before last asked us this exact same question. So again, you just call the SP, uh, login AD group membership by login, and pass it the login you're interested in. And this is the one I think I need to switch. I think I need to switch that because I messed up. I messed up my data. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can see that this user egant has access to all of these boxes. And I'm going to concentrate on this one right now. And not only that, but you can see the full path of all of the AD, of all of the AD groups that he's using to get in. So he's not only directly in Budget SQL, but he's getting into Budget SQL from corporate, from HR, from sales and marketing, from finance, from IT. So these guys had done the equivalent of this. They took him out of Budget SQL. But what they failed to do was notice that he was in all of these subgroups. And until you get him out of all of these subgroups, he's still going to have access to SQL, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and, and if you look down here, and we even show you how, how many levels deep it goes, how many levels are in between. And if you look down here, this one guy, uh, E. Gant, has access to this server, but he's getting there, and you can see his, he's got a nested chain four levels deep. He gets into legal, which puts him into USB drive, which puts him into CSR, into TGF, and then finally into App Solution users where, he, where, where the login actually exists. So we show you the entire chain for every single one of these guys. Pretty nifty. I don't even know if nifty is the word, but I'm going to use it because I like the word nifty. This is a good word. So <clears throat> that, kind, that level of investigation is absolutely fabulous, right? <clears throat> now, now it's time for the piggybacking talk. So piggybacking off of that, here, let me bring that result set back. So piggybacking off of this functionality, we've got a fabulous alert. And I, I love this alert so much because I don't think, not I don't think, nobody else does this. <clears throat> if this guy or anybody, right, were to be given, uh, were to be put into a Windows group that somehow managed to give them SA access, and when I say SA, I mean any of the server level groups, right? Not just S, not just sysadmin, but any of the any of the higher privileged groups, right? Sure. Um, but if he were if he were put into into this legal group right here, and it ended up with him having SA permissions, you would get an alert email that says this guy has been given SA on these boxes, and that is a level of of enterprise monitoring of enterprise watch, watch out of two. <laughs> watchfulness? Watchfulness, yes, that nobody else provides. So, I mean, imagine that. If you've got a group of 30 people that gets put into another group that is nested 30 levels deep that ultimately, that ultimately reside, rests with them getting SA somewhere, you're going to get an alert that says these 30 people have been given SA on these boxes. Even if it's like 100 boxes, then you'll get that alert. And that's, I don't even know if I can call that powerful. 
that's that's really being able to watch out for your environment, you know, because you need to know these things. There are some things that DBAs actually need to know, and people being put into SA, I think that's that qualifies as one of the things that I actually have to know. Yeah. Okay. There's other stuff that we can do here, right? We can do the, the password tracking uh, so we can see uh, how long. I think I have this one. I'm not sure. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Right, so I can see these are. this is for AD accounts. So if I have to rotate an AD account every couple months or every month or every few weeks or however often, right, once a quarter, I can come. I, I can see how long it's been at every collection since it's uh, at every password change. How long it's been since the password change, and so I can I can make sure that that is uh, that, that it's being rotated on a regular basis when it should be. Right. <clears throat> Not only that, but I could run this query, and I could see when a password change is pending and send out alerts to the people who, who need to know to say, hey, this password needs to be changed in a week. This password needs to be changed in two weeks, right? And you can send out alerts like that. So you can keep people on the you, – you can even have it automatically create a help desk ticket if you wanted to because this is just a result set, right? Once you write the query and you see it, then you can take that result set. You can, you can send an email to your help desk system, and you can write the appropriate people tickets, say change the password in a week, something like that, right? Very cool stuff. And, and all this stuff gets automated. And what's even better <clears throat> is if you have some sort of system that you use that, that automatically generates passwords, right? You could write the query. If it's time to change the password, then you can have that thing automatically change the password and nobody even has to touch it. I mean, there's so many different ways you could do with this, right? You could make it a completely hands-off system. So. Lots of stuff you can do. That's why that's why there's no point for us to provide a GUI because I have no idea what you're going to do with this, but I've given you the stuff to make it as easy as possible. You can do the exact same thing with SQL logs as well. I think this will work in this database. I'm not sure. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so I, I killed the data, so I've, I've messed up my data. But this is the exact same thing that I showed you last time with SQL logins, right? right. I just killed my data, so you'll have to excuse that, but... You get the idea. Um, whether or not you've got password policy enforced, this one's more and more popular. Oh, that, i got to switch back to that other database. There we go. So whether or not I have password policy enforced, um, here I've got 100, 101 items or logins that don't have password policy enforced, and you can see the different boxes. So I can easily see across my entire enterprise if I'm up for an audit, right, I can see, oh, well, these are the guys, they're going to want to see that, so these are the guys I have to take care of, and I'm going to take care of my gold service levels first, and then I'm going to take care of my bronze or my silver, right? So you can even break it down like that. So a lot of good stuff. That's We haven't even touched the no brute force attack stuff. Any okay, so <clears throat> let's get on to the user cloning, because this is, this is my new baby, right? Okay, the problem, you've got this, what is this? Oh, yeah. You've got this new user who comes in, and you need to make him look like somebody else. You need to make him look like his coworker, right? So Steve comes in, and you need to make him look like Bob. <coughs> People have coded solutions like this to various degrees, but they haven't coded it, I'm going to say, as completely as we have, right? <coughs> so because we're considering your entire enterprise. Now, there are a couple different ways that we can do this. Very simply, we can run the clone.login SP, and we pass it the instance ID that we're going to take it from. The login to clone, in this case, is going to be security test. The new login we're going to call John login 568 No, I haven't said it that many times, but I'm, it's pretty close. Um, do I want to copy the password? Probably not, right? I don't want him to have the same password as Bob. Right. Login type? I want to create it as now. This is the this is the login type that you want to create it as, right? So if Bob has a a Windows login, but I need to create Steve as a SQL login, then I can do that. If Bob has a SQL login and I need to create Steve as a Windows login, I can do that, right? And we'll talk about the third type in a minute. And then of course, here's the password you want it to have. So very simply, 
Yeah. I'm creating a SQL login as a SQL login. There <clears throat> we go. And I should really be on the other server by now. I am on the other server. Yep, I sure am. <clears throat> so this result set, I've done a lot of stuff to allow you to, to troubleshoot things and to narrow down your result set and to query things the way you might need to, right? So first and foremost, I give you, let me bring this over here. I give you the permission collection time. Let me close that. I don't really need that stuff. There we go. I give you the permission collection time. So when were these permissions scripted? That's really important, right? Um, the statement name, it's just a friendly name I've given it. So this is the create login statement. This is the create user, SP add role member, object permissions, column permissions, symmetric key, asymmetric key certificate, right? And we, we also do endpoint permissions, but I don't, have a, I don't have an example of it here. The statement level, so this is a, this is, it'll, it'll either be server or it'll be the name of the database or it'll be name of the object. Nope, that's the object name. So it'll either be the server or the name of the database that it's in, right? Description, is it a create, is it an add, grant, die, something like that, right? Object name, what object are these permissions being applied on? So here it's the login, here it's against the DB creator role, right? Here it's against the login, here it's the DDL admin, um, which is being added in the ADB database, right? Um, and down here, you'll see the table name. Uh, the, yeah, this is the table name. Uh, this is the table name and column name. And then down here, we have the, the symmetric key name, the asymmetric key name, and the cert name. Now, I love this functionality for a number of reasons. Obviously, reasons that we, that we intended originally. You know, we want to script that a login so that you can apply it somewhere else. But to have that for logging purposes, for auditing purposes, for reporting purposes, for so many different things, and, and being able to get it comprehensively like this, which, again, huge pain in the butt to do right. without the tool. Yeah, and I think that it's the comprehensiveness of this that really makes it, that, that really makes it fly, right? Because mm -hmm. we could have just spit out statements, but that's not very user-friendly. You need lots of info because I have no idea what they want to be able to do with this, right? So not only do we create the statement. Here are all the statements that are being created. But we also create the negative statement. So if you go, oh crap, I didn't mean to do that, then you can undo it. If you can undo the entire operation, right? Right? You drop login, right? Or you would probably do these in reverse if you really wanted to do it, right? You would order them by reverse because you can't drop login and then do all this other stuff. It's gone, sure. right? So but we give you the negative statement. Any individual statement, you've got the negative statement, right? So uh, we allow you to undo that fairly easily. And actually, I, I do this in my testing all the time. I use the negative statements in my testing constantly. That's great. So we also give you the parameters that you used to, uh, to, to call the SP, right, to create it. So we give you the login that was cloned, the name of the new login, whether or not you wanted the password copied, the login type that was to be created, the password that you used, and the user, and the user who ran the DSP. So you can also see who performed the action as well, right? Oh well, it says here that Steve created that, that Steve ran this, right? So, okay, so number one, that is creating a SQL login as a SQL login. Now I can turn a Windows login here into a SQL login. So you'll see that that's really straightforward. It looks the exact same. She's got vastly different permissions, so it's going to be a lot shorter result set. But you can easily see that she was a Windows login and it is being created as a, uh, as a SQL login. <clears throat> and here, this is that third type that we were talking about. We've got Windows, we've got SQL, and we've got Role. So I can take somebody that's got perfect permissions Dave has the perfect permissions, and, and we're starting to get more and more people that need to be able to do exactly what he does. So let's create Dave as a role, right? He's a role model. Add to Dave role. Exactly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Dave, who has a Windows account, and I'm going to script him as a role. And you notice there's no, uh, there, there's no create login statement because 
there isn't one. You want to create a role. So in every database that Dave has access to, it's going to create that role, and it's going to give that role any permissions that he needs. This one doesn't have any, right? But that's what it's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> this one, in fact, let's call this – I'm tired of naming roles after, after, after logins. Login. Yeah, that's not it's good practice. It's just sloppy, right? So this guy right here, here you can see the created the roles in all the databases. Here's the create role statements, right? And then it turns around and goes to all of those databases and has all of the permissions that that login had. So it gives them to the role. So very cool stuff, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Now, <clears throat> let's say that you only wanted to do the logins themselves, right? I don't want all of the permissions. All I want to do is give him a login, right? And I'll handle that other stuff myself. Well, that's pretty easy. I've just got to grab that result set and put it into a temp table. And then I can just select where statement name equals create login. There's create login statement. Or I can say uh, I only want the login and the stuff for a particular DB. So here is the create login statement and then all of his stuff for that one database server, ADB, ADB, ADB. So I can grab just a, a, an individual database if I wanted to, because if it's got like 3,000 databases on that server, and the one you're copying it to only has one or two of them, right, then this is going to be, uh, th this is gonna be a, a very nice way to grab only the databases you're interested in, right? So you just put it in a temp table, same thing as with the other permissions thing, and then you just argue over where clauses, right? Given you all the information you need to be able to whittle this down as best you can, right? Let's go ahead and drop this guy. So that would make it a whittle operation. It would make it a whittle operation. Not a big That's one. right. Yeah. That that was your bad pun for the day. That was free. Okay, so now that's phase one, right? Phase one is taking an individual user and cloning them on an in, on, on a single box right? That's not too hard to do. A lot of people do that, but that's not considering the enterprise as a whole. Not yet, right? Now, we're going we're gonna to clone all of the users on a single box. So now, you see here, where am I going to, so here's the object name. You can see going through the object names that I'm creating every single user, and I've gone up to 278 rows now, right? So on, that, on this exact same server, I've scripted out every single user. Now, what can this be used for? Oh my God, what can it not be used for, right? So one of, the, one of the best use cases for this is setting up a dev box or a QA box to look like prod. Oh, absolutely. Right, I, wanna, I need every single permission for every single user from prod put onto dev. Well, you know what? Copy and then paste that into a window on dev and you're golden. Done. You've got all the you've got all the permissions right here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, okay, so for server three, let's time this one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand. Okay, three seconds to get that done. Probably five or six seconds by the time I open up the other window and paste it and run it. Right. So we'll we'll round that to ten seconds. Right. So ten seconds to create to to create and run two hundred and seventy eight permission statements and know that it's going to be accurate. That's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. No, we've done even better than that because this was all of the accounts, right? But what if I only want all of the Windows accounts? I can do that. What if I want only the Windows? Now, all of the Windows accounts would be, uh, would be Windows, Windows users, users and groups, right. right? But what if I just want the Windows users? Right. What if I just want the Windows groups? Right? What if I only want the SQL accounts? Not too bad. What if I want a specific list of accounts? And you notice I mixed a Windows and a, and a, a SQL one right here, right? So now I've got two specific accounts. So I can pass in any of those parameters and really fine tune exactly what I'm looking for. Dude, I mean, that's just. That, that's that's really crossing the finish line on this, right? That, really that's is. not bad. Okay. <clears throat> that is excellent. 
but it still isn't considering the entire enterprise. Is this the, but wait, there's more? <clears throat> this moment. is the, but wait, there's more. I, I feel like Billy, what's his name, right? The, the OxyClean guy shouting at him. <laughs> but that's not all. Now you can get. No, no, no. no that don't guy drives me crazy. Shouting. What's his name, Billy? I don't know. Kiddo knows because he aggravates her so bad she, she, she remembers who he is. So now we're going to take, uh, where are we? What are we going to take? Oh, yeah. So now let's say that Steve comes in. In fact, I'm going to truncate this. That Steve comes in, and you need to make him look like Bob, right? We've already established that. But Bob has access to 1,700 servers. Oh, my God. Oh, and we're not using, we're not using groups like that. We're still managing stuff manually, or we're half and half, right? right? Oh, my God. Kill me, man, right? But that's okay because this can be done. We were we were doing a demo just last night, and the the DBA asked us this question. Yeah, but can, what if I have like two thousand servers that I need to push that to? Can you do that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they went, really? <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> to do that, we call this SP instead, and we're going to clone this guy as this guy. And you can still pick the login type. You're going to say no to the copy password again, right? And you're going to set the password. This is going to be push equals one. Now, you don't have to. We could do push equals zero. In fact, let me go ahead and run that with push equals zero. I haven't run this with push equals zero yet, so I hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> And so what this is going to do is you can see that it's going to clone this guy all the way across, right? So let's go and do push equals one. There we go. Or let's do, uh, yeah, let's do that, and then we'll – nope, I'll do this. Sorry, getting myself mixed up. There we go. So now – oops, I just did that, didn't I? I'm creating his permissions across all of the servers. Not bad, Not right? Bad at all. Not bad at all. So by by putting logins by 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 running this SP, what you do is you put that result set into this table, and then Minion Enterprise turns around and runs those statements on all of the boxes for you. Right, because. Copying to one box, eh, it's nothing much to copy those statements and run them by hand. Copying them to two or three boxes, eh, yeah, but still, right? But, you know, ten boxes or a dozen or a thousand, yeah, absolutely, it should be right. automated. <clears throat> right. So what this does is this, is this looks at the permissions that he has on each individual box, and it clones the permissions on each individual box, right? So that's how that works. It says, oh, well, this one has, he has this one, he has that one, he has that one. So you're able to you're able to do that to each individual box and get the the exact permissions that Bob has on each individual box. It doesn't just take it from one server and then push that out to all the servers. That would be stupid, right? Because they don't have the different databases. He doesn't have different permit. He doesn't have the same permissions. So I could easily just get my create login statements here if I wanted to as well, right? Now there's one thing to there's one thing to notice about this, and I hope this comes out all right. I've only got one right here. Um, oh, that's because I'm on the wrong server. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get back to this server because this is where I think I was doing all of that stuff here. I thought I didn't have as many. Uh, let me push. Let me truncate this first. I didn't think I had as many uh, permissions on there as I should. Well, that was <clears throat> helpful. Yeah, that's much better. I hope. There we go. Okay. So that one produces a result set. So this one, there we go. So this is much better, right? This is, uh, this is an actual result set that I can do something with. There we go. That's 430 rows now, right? Um, so let's, yeah. There we go. So let's see if we can look at just, I've lost where I am. I need to go down. There we go. There we go. Now, there's something really interesting here. 
<clears throat> and the thing that's really interesting is that this is, this is a true cross the finish line type of feature because notice how we've created every single one of these with the same SID. So it's a brand new login that we've cloned all across your environment and we've created it with the exact same SID on every single server. So if you got 17,000 boxes that we're going to create this login on, they're all going to be created with the same SID. So we are not going to do anything at all that creates an orphaned user. And this piggybacks off of our SID server functionality that's another module, right? So we're, we're plugging this into the SID server, and, and that allows us to do that. But just look at how cool that is that I'm not only creating this on 11 servers in, in my test environment, but they've all got the same SID, and I don't have to worry about, about moving things back and forth, right? As a matter of fact, they all do that, right? <clears throat> so they will all create the thing um, on the same SID, so uh, uh, with the same SID. Consistent SID, yeah. yeah. So if I ran that first SP, the clone.login, against server three, and I needed it to, and I wanted to clone this one guy, um, uh, on to server 29, and then I wanted to clone somebody else. I wanted to clone him uh, from uh, server 5 and put it on server 43. If, as long as it's the same user, it ties into the SID server, and it'll use that guy. It'll use the same SID mm -hmm. of, on both of those servers, even if I do them on completely separate operations. It doesn't even have to be the same operation. So the SID server knows that it's the same user, um, grabs that SID and uses that SID in here instead. So that's just one less thing. Yeah, it's just one less thing you have to, to worry about, right? So I'm going to truncate this guy one more time. There we go. Now, um, yeah, that's the thing. Now, pushing the logins. So this one uh, is – here, let me truncate this and show you some. I'm going to truncate this guy. Oh, Long sorry. Later. Wrong server. <laughs> We've got to consolidate this. Uh, yeah, but, you know, what would be the fun in that? So I'm going to trunk – I'm going to get in the right database first. There we go. So I'm going to truncate this. You're going for uh, execute. execute. There you go. There we go. Back on track. I is can DBA. Well done. Okay. So now I'm going to run all of these guys. Now, even the login – remember before when we when we cloned a single single login – we we highlighted all the code and we pasted it in the sure. in the window, right? But you don't have to. You could push equals one on it too and have minion do it for you. Sure. So here we're gonna we're gonna push we're gonna clone this guy security test on instance uh, on instance ID three and we're gonna push it to forty two and forty to forty one and forty two and then we're gonna take this other guy and we're gonna clone it to the exact same server, right? Just to give a little uh, just to give a little variety, right? Now, because of the way this is done, um, I'm showing you two things here. I'm showing you that uh, I'm showing you that you can make changes here if you need to, right? So I'm changing the default database, but also I have to change the default database because the database on the second one doesn't exist, and the statements are going to fail otherwise, right? So this is the, this is here to show you that once you get them, once you get the result set in this table that you can do anything you need to, including making changes to things like default database and language or whatever you need to, right? So I'm going to run these guys, and then I'm going to run that update. There we go. Now I've built in some failure here. I hope it, I hope it actually fails. I'm going to kick off the job that actually pushes it to that server. There we go. And once it happens, these guys should disappear out of the login push table. Probably still firing up. Fire up. Wait for it. Wait for it. Come on, dude. That is like 400 times today. Let me see. Hold on one sec. You get out of my way. <laughs> Nothing is responding. There we go. Let's see if I get any if I get any love now. Something's just taking long. I don't know why. Because it shouldn't be. Yeah, I can see it's just hanging. This is not a minion problem. This is a dev server problem.
Yeah, I'm on the right box. Let me see if I'm getting anything here at all. Well, it's thinking about it. So it rolls through each one. It rolls through in each order one. And yeah. them out. Oh, so I did some data in here. So it is, it's stuck on something, and I don't know what it's stuck on. Probably can't connect to one of the things. However, <clears throat> I want to show you what the history table looks like because once things, once, once things get uh, processed from here, they get removed from there and put into the history table. And the history table gives you any errors that occurred. So you can have got some, I've got some errors here that I've built into the, into the system, right? So it, it shows you that stuff, hopefully um, in a more timely manner than it's given it to me now. I ran this like 40 times this morning and it took, and it took like three seconds each. Well, there's your problem. The laptop's tired now. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's see if it's still, nope, it's still working. Good command. So, okay, I'm going to stop this on the back end because uh, something has clearly gone haywire on my server. I've maxed something out. But you get the idea. That's what, that's what the history looks like, right? And then you can go in there into the, uh, into the error column, and you can see any errors, and you can get them fixed if you need to. But more importantly, you can go in there and see if there were any errors that the statements didn't run, right? So you can, if you're expecting some permissions to be on there and they weren't, right, then you can go in there and see, make sure that they didn't fail. So, <clears throat> okay. So that's the, the holistic approach. Uh, to pushing stuff out to your entire enterprise, right? Now, there's one more key to this. Well, there are two more keys to this, but one more key to this. Um, you could easily create your own processes and insert them into this exact same table. Here, let, you're right. Let me let me embiggen that a little bit. There I we go. I didn't say it out loud yet. So you could create your own process and push these guys in here. You don't have to use my SPs, right? So you could you could come in here and what are we doing here? We're creating a temp table. We're we're taking all of the gold level servers and all of the logins that aren't in here, right? So basically all of the logs that aren't built in anything, right? And we're going to create a statement. We're just going to create a user from login and we're going to add this to the oh, I see. You're going to you're putting it in the MSDB into the agent reader role, right? So you're adding all of the users in the box into the agent reader role for the global SLA servers, right? And then all you're doing is you're adding that data into this push, so it's going to be pushed out the next time the the next time the push mechanism runs. Right. So that's an, an excellent way. Here, I'll go ahead and run this. Um, that should go there. There we go. And so here you've got them in the uh, in the table, and all of this statement name level. We didn't fill any of that in. That's why that's blank. That's what shows you that it's uh, that it's it's that level of process, right? So you can use this to create your own process. If you've got special things you need to do, I need to remove permissions for all of these guys or this group from everybody, right? You get specialized permissions that you need to push out across your entire environment or just a group of servers and have a record of it, even, right? Then you can. Um, uh, then you can add it to the to the process yourself. You can put an inject custom code into the process. So that's another really excellent way to, to work with this is just adding in your own security code. Now, one last thing, and this is arguably my favorite. I mean, I say that about everything, right? But I love this, <coughs> is scripting logins. And this one is so beautiful because this gives you a, a view just like we just like we script out all the database objects every night, right? We script out all of your uh, all of your objects every single night, or, or all of your security every single night, and give you a record of the security in your entire shop. Yeah, I was so, kind of hinting at this earlier. I yeah, you were. So when I run this, and I'm only running this against, see, this is by server name, and I'm only running this against two servers right now. So now when I run and I look at the at the clone login scripts table, you can see that this is what was executed. This is when the permissions were collected. And then here's all the same other stuff that you saw before, right? You've got the, the, st the negative statement, all of that stuff. But here you've got a history. And you can see that the execution date time is changing, right? So you can see that's changing just like that.
not too bad. And I can do the same thing for all the SLAs, which is how it works, right? Um, I can uh, grab this for all of the gold servers. And so here I'm going to run it for all of the gold servers as well. And that'll take a couple more seconds. Oh, it actually didn't. That was beautiful. And now when I come in here, you can see I've got the same thing all of the, for all of the gold servers as well, right? So really, really cool stuff in here. Um, uh, what was I going to say? <clears throat> and this is what allows you to compare security uh, from one week to another, from one day to another, from one month to another, right? Mm -hmm. From one server to another, right? On a different, on a specific day. So if a user comes up to you and says, oh, well, I need to, uh, um, <clears throat> I need, you know, I need to be able to do this. And I was able to do it last week, but now I can't do it. You can go there and you can see the permissions that he had last week and go, oh, yeah, something happened and you're missing this permission. Or, no, you couldn't. You didn't have that permission last week. What user account were you using? Because it's not yours, right? You can add this to your processes. And since it comes from a central location, every process hits the exact same thing. You can move that code from one server to another and not have to make any changes. So if you want to make that part of your dev server build or your test server build, right, and have it look like the QA box or have it look like the, the prod box, right, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to call one of those SPs and generate the code. You can call the, the last night scripting of it and say, well, I want, you know, as of last night is good enough, right? So you can just say, give me the latest, the latest scripts for this server and you run them on this server. You can make that part of an SIS package or part of a PowerShell script or, uh, you know, God forbid, if you want to put a link server on there and oh, then, and then no. get at it that way. But it's still possible, yeah. right? So you can add this stuff to your processes and just go for it. You know, you don't ever have to touch security on those lower level boxes again because it's always going to look like that. And if you need to update the security on there, it's that easy. Boom, you can just have it done, right? So this is made for – this feature is made for entire environments. It's made for – thousands of boxes to be kept um, spiffy clean, right? Um, <laughs> Trademark midnight EVA. <laughs> so between, yeah, exactly. So between the, the user cloning across your entire environment, the scripting, the AD expansion, um, the, the SA alerting, right? Um, we've got security covered. And there are so many things that you can write yourselves and alert on yourselves, right? So... I'm going to open it up to any questions or comments that anybody has. Uh, you may unmute yourselves if you are muted. <laughs> and uh, I'll sit here for a minute and see what everybody thinks or anybody wants to say. Yeah, something is hung. Let's go ahead and put up that last slide while they're thinking and typing. Okay. Hey, Sean, this is Robert. I wanted yeah. to ask your uh, process that queries AD and, um, and uh, you know, uh, builds out the groups and all that stuff. Right. I'm assuming you have a scheduled task that update, updates that information regularly? Yes. Um, by default, it does it once a week because, you know, I don't, I don't know that changes happen that, you know, more often than that that you need to know about. But you can easily change that schedule to whatever you want. And if I know, like, for example, I know, okay, we just made a change. Um, is, is there, like, a procedure I can call to say, okay, go go update this information now or just yes. run the job? Yeah, just run the job. Okay, cool. And since we have SP start job, you could actually make that part of a process. Sure. Right? I made this change, and I'll go, you know, I know that this, that this change has been made. Now go update it, and it'll get the latest information. Absolutely. Julio, thanks. Anybody else? So, what do you guys what, what do you guys think of the of the the user cloning feature? Have we have have we done everything you think it needs to do? Do we give you all the info that you that you think you would need? Uh, this is the y'all are the first ones to see this. So, you know, this has all been in my head so far. So, tell me what you think. Well said. Yeah, you know, they've got to unmute themselves. And... I unmuted myself 10 times. Hey, I, 
I, I think it's great. It's something that, you know, I, it's similar to something I'd started working on a long time ago and just never had time to, to build out everything I wanted to. So I'm glad that somebody else did it. Yeah, that's we've we've noticed it's a it's a huge dearth in the industry and not I mean there there are other vendors who do a type of user cloning, but you still have to round robin across all of your servers and I think that's I, I think that's where we really shine is not making you do that right you can it's a simple SP call for you to for you to clone somebody across your entire environment, and that's that's really something that nobody else. Has even has even attempted, to my knowledge. I don't know if they've attempted it or not, but they know they've never attempted it in any kind of public build. I will say that I never had a satisfactory tool for this in all my time as a DBA. And you still don't. No, I'm kidding. Well, now I do. Well, now you do. <clears throat> so, okay, guys, um, we're gonna bring this thing to a close here. Lori's gone awful quiet. I think we uh, I think we've deadened Lori. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, feel free to go to uh, minionware.net and get uh, and sign up for the 90-day trial. We've got tons of uh, documentation and tutorials, and, you know, you'll get the Minion newsletter when you do that. And she says join us for the January 5 Enterprise Talk. Oh, is we'll, that up in the air? That's up in the air. We'll see, we'll, we'll see how we do. Okay. Right? But this feature, the, the, this, uh, this cloning feature is coming out very soon this is this is a preview and it's coming on the next build which is probably going to happen in the next month so you know if if somebody if one of you guys went to the site and and got the trial and just had to have the user cloning feature i could package it up for you and i'd, I'd be happy to package it up for you as a as an update and and give it to you right now so you know and i think that's going to bring us to a close isn't it so. Oh, just one final comment from the chat. We're a small shop, but I can see where cloning would be awesome in a larger environment. Absolutely. Well, yeah, Tom, not only, not only for turnover, but, I mean, just for auditing, when an auditor comes to you and says, I want you to prove that this guy hasn't had SA all year, or, <clears throat> you know, or if, some, if something happens and somebody's permissions change and you want to get him back to the way he was last week, so it's not just cloning, which is very useful, but it's also the scripting feature as well that I think really makes this, that I think really, really knocks this out of the park because it allows you to go back in time and see, well, you were working last week. Let's compare the two result sets today and last week and let's see what the difference is, right? Uh, so the auditing feature is which auditing feature specifically are you talking about? The you talking about the uh, the AD expansion kind of thing or the probably or the AD login expansion scripting and being able to because they're the both alerts. auditing features, yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, the alerts, my God. Uh, all of the auditing features, perhaps. Yeah. Which, which specific one are you talking about, though? Oh, AD and alerts. Yeah, I don't blame you. A lot of people look at us just for that feature, so. Okay, well, guys, if, if nobody has anything else, I'm going to at least close down the recording, and we'll stick around here as long as you guys want. Sure. So uh, I'm going to turn off the recording now, and you guys can come or uh, you guys can leave or stay as you like. <laughs>